Hey guys, what's up? My name is Jesus Conde and welcome back to another episode of Digital Painting Art Show. Today we're going to be doing an insect and I'm going to tell you a few things about how not to paint highlights and how to do chromatic aberration. So let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do is um, look for reference. You need to have reference in everything that you're going to draw or paint because if not you're going to do it from memory and doing it from memory is not a good idea. And I'm going to start doing this sketching like really, really, really soft without getting too much into details because <clears throat> this, is the, this is the way I like to draw. I like to do things really um, uh, subtle at the beginning and then start to do a harder line in the, in the process. Uh, I found this way to be really easy for me to draw because I can I can correct things and I can change few things and even make mistakes uh, that will help me at the end. Those little mistakes sometimes uh, give you a new idea or a new shape that you wasn't in, intended to do it, and that, that's a good thing. Um, some some people call it uh, happy accidents, and I, I also embrace <laughs> that um, way of. Um, thinking about them. So um, I just started using a um, H uh, type of pencil and now this is an HB uh, kind of um, pencil that I use at the end for the details. Um, <clears throat> that's all I can say about the drawing, it's really not that detailed um, but it gives you a really nice way to start because you are already already thinking how are you going to paint this, what colors are you going to be using, and all the stuff. Okay, so here I'm, I'm using the laser tool to pull out this um, insect from the paper. If you want to know more about how to use this tool, please watch last week's tutorial about the octopus tentacle. Um, for now, I just can tell you that I, I went to image adjustments, hue and saturation, and adjusting the colors and light and lightness. I went to this uh, kind of like a purple color, and then I'm, I'm just um, doing some variations of color on top of it in a new layer. Of course, everything is in a new layer. You can create a new layer with Control Shift N. Um, <clears throat> Mostly because I, um, looking at reference, I, I thought, I saw th uh, that some insects are really, really colorful. I didn't want to do a happy colored insect, but I did, re I did want it to have um, some, some colors on it. So I'm here, I'm just putting some colors as a base. You don't have to do any shading yet. And what I'm going to do, because I have another layer, is go again to image, human satura image adjustments, human saturation and mess, mess with the bar to see if I can get another variation of color. So I like this one. Uh, at the end I'm going to use a brighter yellow color, but this is a starting point. I'm here I'm adding because I'm testing uh, already with what, I'm, what I want to do. I'm using um, this soft brush to give some volume, but it's not definitive. It's not like this is going to be the how it's going to look. Here I'm trying to mess with the um, overall uh, lighting of the scene, mostly the reflections, to see if I can get a cool look um, out of it. And from now on, it's mostly going to be um, putting some colors to test, um, mostly for testing. You're gonna notice that I'm not using the soft brush anymore because it didn't feel to me like it look, um, it, it shouldn't look like that. It shouldn't look so um, perfect. So I started using this um, brush and I'm, I'm blending the colors myself without using any soft brush that makes, kind, kind of makes the blending for me already. So um, I have to try harder to get the soft look but I didn't want to look completely soft at the end, so that's why I left left it like that. Um, I'm I'm trying to use the brighter and more colorful 
color, the more uh, saturated colors where the light hits because that way it makes it look more kind of like a queer material if the highlights are also in tune with the colors and the shadow is just black and then I just change the opacity because it's an old layer and then I erase a little at the, at the end <clears throat> um, here I'm testing some of the highlights but it's mostly going to be kind of like a reflection so I, I'm still trying here in this in this phase I'm still trying I'm using a little bit of red for some reason um, because the reflection doesn't have to be exactly uh, the same colors that I use on the on the bug it could be another color it could be green it will in fact it will be be more logical to use green because of I don't know grass around something like that but I thought it was uh, a nice decision so I, I just kept with it I kept working with the gray reddish and here I'm adding a little bit of white um, just because all around all this space is mostly gray so it, it should it may sense may sense that the reflection is in fact gray so I'm using a little bit of white um, transparent white so the brushes that I'm using are um, this brush which is really really normal there's nothing weird with it the only thing different is if I open the brush um, panel which is with the letter with the key F5 key and I grab a circle brush any circle brush and you go to shape dynamics I mean um, brush tip shape you can see that if I turn down the roundness in the vertical I get the same brush that I'm using and this brush has um, also has shape dynamics it has the the <coughs> the pen pressure activated the other dynamics no this one the shape dynamics because if it's turned off looks like this and when I turn it on with the pen pressure I get the variation of, of the pressure of the pen and that's what I want that's the result I want with this um, brush and the other brush that I use is a really really soft one um, it's just any soft brush that you could find on Photoshop. The difference is that my, my soft brush has the other dynamics activated or the um, transfer in the new Photoshop is called. It's called transfer. In mine, because it's all, is the other dynamics. So <clears throat> that's the difference. This allows me to paint uh, different different opacities depending on how I use the brush, how hard do I I push on the on the tablet so now let me let me explain you a few things about making highlights the thing about the highlights it's this is the way how the beginners do it and with the what I always say to people if you want to ac accomplish a great level in digital painting you just have to do the same thing that the pros do I'm not saying that I'm a pro because I, I don't I don't think I am yet but I I still learning and I'm trying to do the things that they do so I can get the same results so what what they do is uh, the beginners do the the um, the highlights and the backlights they do it like this they do kind of like a just a straight line going all the way around the that border that edge if it looks more like an edge and they do it this way they do the highlight this way if they do a let's say a highlight here they will do it like this and if they do a backlight they will do it like this just all the all the edge they will do all the edge and that's not the way it is that's not the way it is at all when you're doing um, when, when you and especially something like this that is something organic something alive it has so many tiny variations that you cannot do this kind of uh, highlights <clears throat> so when we want when we want to try to do is making variations we want to work with a low opacity let's say 30 or maybe 20 percent 
let's go let's start with 30 and then we, we go to 20 percent and we're going to try to develop those highlights so let's start here like really hard then change a little and then hard again this is what's going to give you a new look on your on your highlights because highlights are not constant uh, a highlight how the beginners do it will be like a perfect surface and this is not a perfect surface. this is an organic surface it has a lot of mistakes has a lot of bumps has a lot of um, punches uh, we will say and stuff like that so you have to think of it like something that is really not that clean is not that perfect so you have to do this kind of a the highlight that breaks the highlight that 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 gets thinner the highlight that is just one little spot so all these highlights you have to figure out where they're going to be um, and of course it depends on where the light is coming from another thing is the color here I'm doing it on, on white but the great thing will be to do it in another color depending on the color of the light or depending on the color of the object that you're doing the highlight so now what I'm going to do you can see the difference um, even that is not something polished you can see the difference in the you can see it's bright in here and here and other parts is not and if you look at the beginners one it's just a straight this all just a straight line so now I'm going to use another color so you can see how that tiny variation of color you can see gives another completely look it looks completely different like more rich and that's something that we also want on our paintings to do more to, to look more complex this complexity is going to make it look more professional of course you have to know your fundamentals and everything else but in terms of highlight this is the stuff that you should start to be doing if you want to jump to the next uh, level on your paintings so this is it okay so now after I explain that we can start doing that same thing here and you can see that I'm also doing that for the reflection some parts are thicker some parts are, are thinner some parts um, it has another color um, I'm also taking some color that I already have it's really more like for, for example here I'm using the bright colors to do that reflection there because I think it gives another um, is a really pretty effect and uh, to have those bright colors showing on, on one corner and, and not in another corner and another edge sorry and if, if you notice that there was a timer there that's because for, for those who haven't seen other videos what I do is I put a timer of five minutes and every five minutes I jump to another part of the painting like five minutes here and when the when the the countdown ends the timer ends I just jump to another part of the painting right here I'm going to use the dodge tool which is with the letter O you can see in there I use the dodge tool but doesn't mean you can do the highlights just with the the color how I'm doing right now right now I'm doing it doing it with the with just a color I picked there um, it's not white it's not uh, black it's something in the middle it's kind of like a bluish gray and that's how I'm doing the light the highlights with and you can see it's not a, it's actually not that high uh, light it's more like a some kind of a reflection a specular reflection um, the bright spot in all the center of that will be the highlight but notice that it's not just one ball of white it has little um, scratches it has shape on it it has um, some parts are not even well painted stuff like that that's what's going to give you a sense of detail in your painting that is not really is not that perfect and I think that's a really cool uh, to do the paintings a really cool way uh, to do the paintings and it looks more artistic instead of just doing uh, something uh, completely perfect doing something that it's uh, super polished 
at the end if you if you want to do something polished you just just need more time just do the same thing but with more time apply you can use a timer instead of five minutes do 10 minutes and when i have to do a really really defined uh, painting what i do is i use a grid put a grid on top and then i spend 10 uh, 20 minutes in each square and if the painting is like um, i don't know how many um uh, uh, squares can the grid had but if it's a lot you will you will spend a lot of time and at the end i'm telling you that's what's going to give the quality to your painting the time you spend on it and well you can see i'm, I'm mostly doing reflections at the edge uh, the edges is more like a gray color um and I'm just right now I'm just taking with the eyedropper which is the letter I on the keyboard or if you're using the brush with B uh, you can press alt and you get the the eyedropper instead of just um, using the icon or something so now I'm going to explain you something called chromatic aberration let's let's jump into how to do it first for that we need the channels and you can click here in the channels uh, or go to window and channels if you don't you're gonna find that um, little um, window and what we want to do is we're going to select where we want to do the chromatic aberration on and we're going to click which channel we want to modify I always work with the red but you can see there are the green and there is the blue and it all look like that because these are the values in blue these are the values in red and green alone so you only you right now you're only seeing each um, individually so what we're going to do is we're going to select this um, layer but we want to click here in the eye or RGB and we can see the colors now but we still are selecting the red only the red one now we're going to click here to move and we're going to just with the arrows on the keyboard we're going to move a little bit tiny to the right just a little bit and if I move uh, even more and more you can see I'm going to zoom um, you can see how it, the distortion of the channels so what we're going to do is just a little a little bit to the right and a little bit down and that will be it that's enough uh, for the chromatic aberration effect so that will be it if you want to paint again you have to click on the RGB by the way so here if you go to Google and you look for chromatic aberration you can find a lot of stuff it's actually a uh, def defect uh, of the cameras mostly have to do with light uh, well, I invite you to look for it like in Wikipedia or some, some kind of encyclopedia you can find on the internet or an article to explain to you um, what the exa what exactly com chromatic aberration is, but it's something has to do with light and the, and the lenses in the camera. But because it's something that happens in a camera, uh, it's kind of like you cannot escape of um, from it. <laughs> um, a lot of people is using this in, in the paintings or they are using in, in games in purpose to make it look more real because it's the kind of stuff that happens and it looks fantastic I can say that it gives a really nice touch to the final product when it's done mostly when it's something like futuristic or something like miniature or stuff like that that's that's where it looks more realistic something underwater too looks really cool in, in underwater things so <clears throat> that's the, the place that you should be using it now I'm in the end of the painting, which everyone know that I love to do a little bit of uh, background. Nothing fancy, just one color there. And we are getting about to end this tutorial already. What I did was just uh, creating a few points in the air. And then putting some blur on, the, on them to kind of look like particles floating. Uh, little points and then going to to filter blur all the stuff uh, Gaussian blur and then I created new ones uh, without the effect so it looked like they are unfocused 
and that kind of makes it look a little bit more like um, has more more sense in the miniature world so that will be it uh, I wanted to integrate it more so I did a little bit of hair on it a lot of bugs have hair on them so I, that's why I left this for the end adding a little bit of hair and then burning it with the dutch tool so if you want to use this uh, bug in any of your projects you can you can download the PSD in my patreon page uh, you will have the PSD and an extra video of about one hour uh, well most of them are, are of one hour but it, um, sometimes they're a little bit less like 40 minutes uh, but without editing doesn't have any editing a lot at, at all you can see the whole process from the beginning to the end and you can stop it's a file that you just download um, if you are uh, my patron and it really helps me a lot so if you can do that you will receive um, one um, one PSD every weekend well actually three three weekends of the month and <clears throat> you can see it's only just two dollars per um, per month and this is all the stuff that I have uploaded since I started uh, it's still growing I'm starting to upload more stuff like what I do in the week right now I'm trying to do some sketches about a project that I want to develop it's called velocity and this is a sketch that I made for it so stuff like that I'm going to be posting more of this kind of stuff but the only people that's going to be able to see it are my patrons so thank you if you can if you can be part of it if not if you don't want if you don't want that and you still want to support me there's a guide here of uh, 20 pages because a lot of people were asking me how, how do I paint a skin like I want to be skin like you and stuff like that and I kind of made some kind of a, like a recipe I spent a lot of time putting this together kind of like a recipe the videos are just one hour each of, of a boy and a girl and <clears throat> you can see step by step how I paint everything and you can have the line art you can have the you can have the palette of colors so you know exactly what color I use and you can use it too and compare um, you can have everything that I used and I made for this tutorial and is in my Gumroad page or the selfie page in the in the links on the description so thank you very much if you can if you can get one of these or you can get in my patreon page uh, patreon page so thank you see you next week and paint a lot